I've had a lot of troubles and trials in my little lifespan. When I stand alone and the battle gets hot, I always do the best I can. I must have crossed a million valleys, shed a million tears. When I come to the river of Jordan, hallelujah, then I'll have no fear. Then I'll have no fear. One more river to cross, one more mountain to climb, one more valley that I gotta go through, leaving all my troubles behind. One more battle with the devil, and I know he'll understand. I'm going through with Jesus, hallelujah, holding to his nail-scarred hand, holding to his nail-scarred hand. talk about me since I've walked this narrow way it's just a little valley that I came through when I got on my knees to pray I've climbed a lot of high mountains crossed a lot of little streams when I see old Jordan cold and dark that'll be the last for me that'll be the last for me one more river to cross one more mountain to climb, one more valley that I gotta go through, leaving all my troubles behind. One more battle with the devil, and I know he'll understand. I'm going through with Jesus, hallelujah, holding to his nail-scarred hand, holding to his nail-scarred hand. One more battle with the devil, and I know he'll understand. I'm going through with Jesus, hallelujah. Hold him to his nail-scarred hand. Hold him to his nail-scarred hand. A country where no twilight shadows deepen. On ending day where night will never be. Right, A city where the storm clouds cannot gather. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. What will it be when we get over yonder and join the throne around the glassy sea? We'll join just what heaven means to me. of Jesus before whose image other loves all flee and when they crown him 
him Lord of all, I'll be there. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. We'll join our loved ones and crown Christ forever. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. seems dark and long as I pass amid the throne hold to my hand dear Lord I pray give me grace to shout and shine ever in the life divine Lord lead me on Lord lead me on from day to day Lord lead me on from day to day I want to walk the holy way no friends forsake me all alone. I ask the Lord, Lord, to lead me on. This world of doubt and gloom, when hope's flowers fail to bloom, hold to my hand, hold to my hand dear, dear Lord, Lord, I pray, dear Lord, I pray, I have put my faith in Thee, till the homeland I shall see. Lord, lead me on, Lord, lead me on from day to day. Lord, lead me on from day to day. I want to walk the holy way. For sake, me all alone. I ask the Lord to lead me on. Still and on, and my strength is almost gone. Hold to my hand, hold to my hand, dear Lord, I pray. Lord, I pray. Surely Thou will ne'er forsake till in heaven I awake. Lord, lead me on. Lord, lead me on from day to day. Lord, lead me on from day to day. I want to walk. Forsake me all alone. I ask the Lord to lead me on. I ask the Lord to lead me on.
Welcome our video audience with us today, and uh, I'd like to uh, include you in on a very important announcement. On Sunday, October the 24th at 10 a.m. here at Graceway Fellowship Church at 40 East Washington Street in Mooresville, 46158, we are going to have the Rydell family here. So uh, Southern Gospel Group, we'd like to invite you to come and be a part of that day with us and uh, celebrate Jesus. Amen? All right. So the Rydells, October the 24th. All right, I got my new Bible with me today. Man, I feel like I'm all preached up, ready to go. Amen? I feel like I'm starting all over. <laughs> oh, okay. Psalm uh, number 37, a very familiar passage here. It says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for ordering our steps. And Father, today I pray that you'd help me, God. Holy Spirit, speak through me. Bless me here today. Let me be a blessing to these people and for those who might be listening later. And I pray, God, that you'll just open up our thoughts, our hearts here today. And God, if there's a Christian that is going through a hard place today, I pray they'll be encouraged. And I pray, Lord, for those that are listening or here today that may not know Jesus in a personal way, I pray, God, that today would be the day they'll call upon the Lord and ask you to establish their ways. Father, thank you for your love and your mercy. Thank you, God, for what you've already done for us here today. Now, Father, lead us here, and I ask this all in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Psalm 37, 23 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. I want to talk to you today about when your path gets interrupted. Amen? When your path gets interrupted. Uh, that scripture, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. You know, I always had a certain thought about that scripture, but then I was attracted to the word ordered. And I looked this up, and what it means is to stabilize, to establish, or to secure. Keep that thought in mind as we go on today. And uh, the song that Dan and I sing, Lord, Lead Me On, uh, is very fitting and proper to go right along with this message today. And so when uh, he walked in and he said, uh, you want to sing a song today? And this was the first thing that came to my mind. Yes, I do. And this is the song I want us to do. Amen. Uh, Lord, lead me on. When, but when our paths get interrupted, 
The word interruption is defined this way. It is a stoppage or a hindering of an activity for a time. Now, you know, sometimes you can tell and other times you may not be able to tell that we come over here, the group does, every Thursday at 12 o'clock and we meet here until somewhere around 2 o'clock. We practice these songs uh, that you heard us sing this morning. And uh, we like to finish around 2 o'clock if we can. There's a reason for that. You see, Dan and I, he lives on the south side. I live in Fishers. And if you get on 465 at 3 or 315, Brother Andy, you know what I'm talking about. You and Miss Sheila, you guys live over there. Uh, you're going to be go and stop and stop and go and go and stop and pause. Go and stop and go and stop and pause. Stop, go, stop, go, pause. Bang, somebody's had a wreck. Now, rrr, rrr, rrr. stop and go and stop and go and pause. I hate it. And so... We moved our time to 12 o'clock hoping to get out of here around 2 to beat the stop and go. And now it's a dead run all the way home looking in the back rear view mirror to see if anybody's behind you, right? Am I telling the right guys? Amen? So, you know, uh, you get the picture of what I'm talking about. Some days have interruptions in them, don't they? Some days. And as the old saying goes, I have things to do, places to be, and people to see, and I don't want to risk somebody ramming me in the rear end when I'm trying to get there. Amen? So anyway, life is filled with interruptions. We experience them throughout the day and throughout the week, don't we? If we calculated how much time that is involved with our interruptions, it would probably just blow our minds, right? It really would. Uh, nowadays, when you're at your busiest, right? When you're at your busiest, that's when the cell phone rings. And I'll tell you something. You talk about stealing time from you. And you know, when you hear that phone ring, you know it's important. So you answer that phone and you get this tremendous offer for an extended warranty plan on your car. Now who can turn that down, right? My favorite caller calls me just about every other day. His name is Potential Spam. And every time he calls, I have the sudden urge for a Spam sandwich. <laughs> you know, he calls me from everywhere. He calls me from Crown Point, Indiana, Lowell, Indiana, and one time he called me from uh, someplace in France. <laughs> uh, the one that really got me, though, is when my phone number was calling me. So I had to answer it to see what I wanted. Yeah. Amen? Amen. You know, I get calls from Brownsburg, I get calls from Linton, Indiana, and that guy named Unknown, he calls me a lot. He's got an 800 number, so I know he's important. Amen? So there you have it. Those are just interruptions we experience on our cell phones, don't we? Amen? Now, I know somebody's going to come to me after the service, or they're going to email me or text me and say, I know how to fix that. Just block them. Well, I already do that, okay? But this is a whole new group now that's calling me, okay? <laughs> But uh, sometimes we have interruptions of other means as well, don't we? A storm blows through and tears the roof off of your house and you have to relocate for a few days. Do you know that a year ago, I guess it was about a year ago, a tornado came through Mooresville? You still see some of the evidence here in some of the buildings. But do you know that this roof, uh, the shingles was torn off and that awning out there that you walk under before you come in, that blew over into the backyard back here? And uh, so that's been replaced. We got a brand new roof and we have brand new gutters and downspouts. That's a good thing, amen. So it was here for us when we moved in. God knows what he's doing, amen. But sometimes your car has to go to the garage and has the, uh, the drive shaft replaced, right? Amen. And so uh, what you do, you either hitch a ride or you drive your least favorite second car, don't you? <laughs> amen. So, and, and if you don't think that COVID-19 hasn't interrupted things, you must be living on another planet, right? Amen. But on a more serious side of life, when a loved one passes away, then you have a huge interruption in life. Interruptions are not uncommon. And all you have to do is live long enough and you're going to experience an interruption. Last year, uh, a year ago this past June, my daughter Sarah and her husband Andy, uh, they decided that they were going to relocate to the state of Idaho. So a few weeks before they left Indianapolis, they went out and bought another truck. They bought a big truck because they was going to be towing their fifth wheel with them. So on their very first day when they left Indianapolis, they got all the way over into Iowa and the engine blew up in that truck. <laughs> so they were stranded there for a few days till they, they was either going to buy a new engine 
and they was working with a dealer here. And I wish I knew the name of the dealer because I would certainly be glad to give them some bad publicity right here for the way they handled this situation. But I won't do that. And I don't know their name anyway. But anyway, uh, that when you're messing with my kids, that's a whole different story. I, I might just lose my salvation for a minute, okay, and uh, go in that direction. But anyway, uh, what I was going to say is they had to make a decision whether to replace the engine uh, or get another truck. And uh, the dealership there in Iowa was very kind and generous to them, worked out a great deal for them. So they got another truck, and they got on their way towing the fifth wheel. And I'm glad they had the fifth wheel, or just think of the expense they would have had for hotel costs, amen? But anyway, they're all settled in now out there in Idaho, and uh, they're on a little little mini farm, just what they wanted. Uh, but do you see what happened here? They had an interruption in life, and they experienced some hard days there for just a few minutes. It was a huge inconvenience. It was disruptive in every way. But you know what? They made it there just fine. Amen? They made it there just fine. The interruption is well behind them, and now it's only an unpleasant memory where they were tested, and not only tested, but educated along the way. In the Word of God, there's many stories about people's lives that had interruptions in them. And I think if we'd learn uh, something from them, it might help us when we face our next interruption. Some of us are going to leave here today and get interrupted in life, right? Amen? We're going to wake up tomorrow morning there's going to be an interruption somewhere along the way. When I think about the life of Joseph, I think about a young man whose life was interrupted early in his life. Uh, he started out great. He was his father's favorite son, and he had a coat that represented that. Remember that? That, of course, his brothers did not like that, did they? They were very jealous. And so what they did, they connived a plan that would forever, think about this, that would forever interrupt Joseph's life. He wasn't going to grow up to be a teenager or a young adult or even an adult in his father's household. No, he was sold off to the Ishmaelites after they had put him in a hole for a few, uh, for a few hours anyway. They got him out of there and sold him. Joseph was sold and went to Egypt and from there a man named Potiphar bought him and, and made him work in the, in the palace there for the Pharaoh. Well, you know, even though he was taken to Egypt, things went pretty good for Joseph there for just a little while. He was placed in the palace. He was an overseer of all the affairs. And the Bible said this about Joseph, that he was a goodly person and well favored. And I, when I read this, I am just so reminded that he is so similar to your pastor today. He's a goodly person, and he's well favored. If you've seen me, you've seen Joseph. So next time you read your Bible and you're reading about Joseph, just picture me, amen? Well, let's get back to the story. Uh, as time went forward, Potiphar's wife, you know the story, Potiphar's wife, she took a liking to this good-looking, well-favored young man. And so day by day, she tried to get him to lie with her, but Joseph refused to do so. And one day, she became very aggressive, and she reached out, latched onto his garment, and Joseph pulled himself out of it and fled away. But yet, there she was, holding his garment. Then she called for the men of the house. They came, and she told them a lie about Joseph how he tried to uh, have some misconduct with her, I guess you could say. But she was a liar. And what happened? Joseph's life suddenly got interrupted in a huge way. He goes to the dungeon. He's in prison now. And while he's down there, uh, you know, he's... Uh, He's down there with a bunch of scabby old people that's been down there. They're smelling, they're stinking, and everybody's starving. The food's not good. They barely get any water, and when the water is there, uh, comes to him, it's not clean. But you know what? The first thing I see here is what the Bible said about Joseph. It showed, the Bible says that the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. You know, sometimes when our lives get interrupted, don't think that it's for a bad cause. God's going to show us some favor and mercy along the way. Amen? When trouble comes that interrupt our life, I've, I've, heard so many people, I've heard so many people say, where is God in all of this? Amen? Where is God in all this? When the roof blows off, when the car quits, when the wife leaves, when a spouse dies, when, when, when a loved one passes away, where's God in all this? If you're experiencing a terrible, terrible interruption in your life, understand that God is with you. Amen? That's what I love about Jesus. He's always with us. He said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. And I want you to believe that he is showing you mercy and his favor is with you through all of this. You might be getting news about poor health. 
Some of our members today called me and told me they got news about poor health that they're experiencing. You might be losing a loved one pretty soon. Keith Godby's at, uh, at a hospital room in a hospice care with a cousin right now trying to minister to him. But whatever it may be, big or small, you understand this, that God is with you and he's giving you his mercy and his favor. Uh, you see, the Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Now let me rephrase that. The steps of a good man are established, stable, and secure. That's what the word order means in that passage. The, the God of heaven is establishing your steps. The God of heaven is causing you to be stable. The God of heaven is securing you right where you're at in the midst of an interruption in your life. Amen. 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 Joseph did not complain about his interruption. He continued to be a man of faith. Thank God for that. And Joseph had a gifting from God. He could interpret dreams. Now you remember uh, when he was just a young boy, he got up one morning and said, I had a dream about you brothers last night. And he said, oh yeah, well what's that? One of these days you're going to bow down to me? <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? No, that's what my dream is and I believe it's to be true. God confirmed it. Well, that's when they threw him down in a hole, amen? They didn't like that. But you know what? Now that he's in prison, God brings two men to him and they both have had a dream and they don't know the interpretation of it. So Joseph says, I can tell you what those dreams are about. And he tells them what they're about. One is going to have his head cut off <laughs> and the other one's going to get reestablished back in the palace. And later on he tells Pharaoh about this kid that was able to interpret a dream after Pharaoh had a dream and he was upset about it because he didn't know the, the interpretation of it. I'm going to speak in tongues in a minute. And, uh, and then, <laughs> and then uh, Joseph comes out of the prison. He interprets the dream, and then he gets reestablished back into the palace. In fact, he got so established, he became second in command, didn't he? Amen? So even when you're facing life's interruptions, even when you're facing life's interruptions, it's good to continue to use what giftings he has blessed you with. Amen? Use the giftings that God has blessed you with in the midst of an interruption. Sometimes when you see uh, others facing horrible interruptions, you can use your giftings to go help them. Ain't that right, Barney? <laughs> Amen? Ain't, Barney, you get what I'm saying, don't you? Amen? Barney, okay. And so, anyway... Uh, you can talk to us after the service. You'll figure out what that's all about. But anyway, you can use your giftings to help somebody when they're going through a crisis, when their life has been interrupted. If you've got a neighbor living across the street, as an example, and his water pipes burst and water's going everywhere and he don't know how to fix them, if you've got that gifting, go over there and help that neighbor. Amen? He's got a huge interruption going on in his life and you might even have an interruption going, but you can use your giftings and your talents during the midst of an interruption in life. Amen? And what a ministry that is. I'll never forget when Brother Lyman Taylor came and preached for us in our June Jubilee. And uh, the, the topic sort of came up about visitation, you know. And, you know, visitation is not always going out and knocking on doors. Visitation is not always ministering to people in their home. Sometimes when you see a neighbor who needs to get a new roof put on and you see them struggling and you know how to put a roof on, you can go over and help put a roof on. Amen. And that's ministering to people, especially to the lost that don't know Christ. And when they see the a child of God come over and, and he's offering to help and, and to not even ask for any pay. Amen. He's just coming over because he loves people because Jesus Christ is living his life in and through them and what did Jesus do? Well amen. Jesus was a friend of sinners. Amen. And so that's what we do. We go help those who are in need even if we have an interruption in our life. And think about the interruption they have. They have an interruption in this life but they're living without Jesus Christ. Now that's a huge interruption. Amen? And, and, and folks, i tell you something. Some people are being interrupted right now. Some people are leaving this world right now with the greatest interruption uh, uh, in their whole life and now they're going to spend eternity away from God. But you know what? If they have interruptions and we're able to use our giftings and our talents to help them, that just might be the key that would bring somebody to Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Now I just believe in, in just making things simple. Amen? You don't always have to make it complicated, rushing right out with the Romans road, putting that under somebody's face. Yeah. But what you can do is you can demonstrate love, the love of Jesus Christ. Yeah. The Bible says God is love, amen? And that's just what I intend to do with people, is to love them the best that I can, amen? Uh, <clears throat> when I read the story of Joseph's early years, I am amazed at his patience during his interruption. 
I'm amazed at his integrity during his crisis. I'm amazed at his faithfulness to God and his willingness to help others by using his gifting while his life is in total interruptive mode. <laughs> when you read the life story of Joseph, you see his path of life had many interruptions, but in the end, by the grace of God, everything came together. Amen. And you know why that is? Because Joseph's steps were stabilized, they were established, and they were secure because they were ordered by the Lord. Amen. Amen. Joseph lived in the end. He lived 110 years, and the Bible said he raised his third generation upon his knees. I hope I get to do that. Amen? Nothing wrong with that thought. Amen? Even as recent as I was working on this message and came to this part of the message last Friday, I was interrupted by a telephone call about having my quarterly pest inspection. I said, well, she's gone to work. <laughs> no. <laughs> but they called me up and they said, it's time for your quarterly pest inspection. And uh, what it was, it was a recording. And so I listened to it. And they told me when they're coming. And they said, if you have any questions, call us back at this number. Well, I had a question. So I called the number. And then I was on hold for several minutes. Several minutes. <laughs> Several minutes. <laughs> and the elevator music was playing so loud and so boring, it was killing me. And I was trying to work on this message and listening, listening to elevator music. And then finally I decided to take them up on their kind offer by pressing 1 and I could go to their voicemail box, leave a message with my phone number, and they'll call me back. Great. Number 1, I'm sorry, but this voicemail box is full. <laughs> So anyway, I call back. So now as I call back, I get my little iPhone 11 out. I go to the uh, clock feature and I hit the timer. I'm going to keep track of the minutes and the seconds. So when they answer, I'm going to complain, tell them how long I had to wait till the minute and the second. And I had to call back a second time. And I'm going to tell you about your voicemail box is full. So during the next eight minutes of being on hold, listening to that incredibly terrible music, they finally answer. I was in it. I was very irritated by now. Your preacher can get aggravated. Amen. Just like anybody else, I'm human. I got blood and bones in me just like you do. Amen. Yeah. So I was irritated. But then, but then, oh, Holy Spirit. But then, <laughs> I was gently reminded of what I'm preaching about this morning. <laughs> so, I was kind with my words when I made my request. I maintained my integrity by explaining I had to call twice. I was patient as on her end. There was background noise on her phone, but I had to repeat what I said twice because she couldn't hear me. <laughs> And then I used my talents of gently letting her know her voicemail box was maxed out. Sometimes, folks, it is true that my sermons actually speak to me too. Amen? <laughs> my life was interrupted and I wasn't caring for it not one bit. I was getting irritated. Amen? I wonder if Joseph ever had the notion of wanting to be irritated. Amen? Or getting aggravated. Man, it stinks down here. I don't like the food down here. I saw a cockroach run across your plate over there, Bob. Not you, Bob, but... <laughs> but, you know, just think of the place where he was at. Joseph's life was totally interrupted, but he maintained his, his integrity. He maintained his faith in God. He was a man of God. Amen? Sometimes we have to be reminded, don't we? You know, Moses, his life was also interrupted. Moses, uh, he had a path, uh, the path in his life... It had a bunch of interruptions in his life. The first of all, when he was born, because he was born a baby boy, his mother had to put him in an ark and push him out on the Nile River because all the little babies, baby boys were going to be killed. So he floated down the Nile River, and one day Pharaoh's daughter's out there, and she finds him. She takes him out of the, out of the little ark, and she raises him in Pharaoh's palace. Now think about this. Moses had a very high education by the best teachers in Egypt. Please keep that thought in mind. He had the best education by the best teachers in Egypt. Life is good for Moses, wouldn't you say? 
uh-oh, one day he's out on the patio and he looks out and he sees this Egyptian whooping up on an Israelite Hebrew. He doesn't like that. So he goes down and he, he confronts this Egyptian and they get into a fight and he eventually kills him and then buries him in the sand. Then when he finds out that he was seen doing this, he flees for his life to Midian. Wow. Talk about an interruption. Think about Moses. He went from rich and sonship to a king to rags and now being a fugitive in hiding. He becomes a shepherd. He gets married eventually, and then he has some children. Moses is now living a poor life, and now you know what his job is? His occupation is he's a sheep herder for his father-in-law. How many people like to work for their father-in-law? Amen? <laughs> I'm just kidding. That probably wouldn't be too bad a job. Amen? Amen? be difficult to get fired, wouldn't it? Amen? But anyway, he's, uh, now Moses is on the back side of the desert, and all of a sudden he sees this bush, but this bush is burning, and the problem is it's not being consumed, and now comes the interruption of his life. His path of life is about to change forever, just like it did for Joseph. The Bible said, and I like this, the Bible said that he turned aside to see this great sight. And I love what the next verse is in Exodus chapter 3 verse 4 say. It says, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. There have been times, ladies and gentlemen, I have to say, that I have felt like I've been on the backside of the desert. Amen? Uh, I've had depression. I've had anxiety. There's been physical illness. There's all kinds of uh, financial crisis goes on at different times. And you just name it, that's the backside of the desert for a lot of us. Amen? But I tell you what, if we'll take the time to just turn aside and see this bush that's not being consumed, I believe that God has something he wants to share with us. Amen. God's going to reveal himself to us. He's going to teach us. And God will teach us better than the best teachers in Egypt ever could. Amen. Moses had been taught by, uh, uh, he had been taught and he had been refined, but he did not know the God of Israel until he turned aside. Sometimes when your life is being interrupted and you're thinking about poor me, poor little old me, I wish I had three hands so I could do this, just pat myself on the back, I'm so sorry for me. It'd be nice to just turn aside and see what God's doing. Amen? Sometimes God's operating on the sidelines and, and we need to just kind of take a glance over it and see what it's all about. Amen? Uh, Moses did. He saw a bush that was on fire. But there was something peculiar about that bush. It wasn't being consumed. Amen? Whew. He went over to find out. And God began to speak to him. And you know the story. He took his shoes off because he was on holy ground. And God said, I want you to go to Pharaoh now, and I'm going to have you to lead your people out of Egypt. <laughs> wow, you talk about an interruption, amen? So and here he is. He's now a leader for the children of Israel, going to lead, the, uh, going to lead them out of Egypt uh, to a land that's flowing with milk and honey. They're going to drink from wells that they had never dug. They're going to enjoy fruit from trees that they never had planted. They're going to inherit great riches minus the fruit of their own labors. All because of a man whose path in his life had been interrupted, who turned aside one day to see what God was doing. Amen? Now, you know, today you could be in a desert place. You might be in a desert place tomorrow. I don't know. But let's be reminded that our God is a fire burning in a bush, and he's waiting for you to turn aside and see his glory and what he's about to do in your life. Amen. I sincerely believe that, folks. Your path may change and your path may have changed, but I tell you, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. You see, when the interruptions come, it's good to be reminded that God is still stabilizing me. God is still promoting me. God is still watching over me. God is still protecting me. God is in on what's going on in our life. Amen. God is in on what's going on. You might be wondering about uh, being in God's will when it comes to making decisions, when these interruptions come. Uh, when you're worrying, thinking about decisions, maybe the anxiety level cranks up and you wonder which decision is God's perfect will. Which decision is God's perfect will? Let me just tell you something here today. If you are a born-again Christian, you are in God's perfect will. Amen? So any decision you make, right or left, right or wrong, red or green, 
black or white, this address or that address, that job or that opportunity over there, either choice you make, it's going to work out to the good to those who love God because He's ordered your footsteps. Yeah. Oh, oh, wait a minute. We get the idea that ordered means God's going to tell us which step to take. Yes, I do believe that's true lots of times. Amen. And I thank God for it. But I'm going to tell you, God is stabilizing my step. God is promoting my step. God is watching over my step. God is giving me assurance of my step. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And it may be an interruption. Uh, it may turn out you take the wrong job and it don't work out well. Glory to God. You have learned something. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And that's what God wants, to, wants us to do. Learn something from that experience. And uh, just know this. All the time, God is going to establish you. Amen. The difference is you may have to learn something and you may get a valuable lesson out of it and it could bring unpleasant consequences but there will be good that comes from it. Amen? That's the point. While in the wilderness, Moses made a bad decision one day. He smote a rock when God told him to only speak to it to get water out of it. Well, out of frustration with Israel, Moses took his rod and smote that rock and guess what? Water came from the rock. In his disobedience, water came from the rock. But the consequence was this. Moses, I told you to speak to the rock. Now, you're not going to lead the children of Israel over into Canaan. Joshua would do that. I want to bring you unto heaven. That was the consequence. Well, hey, that's not too bad of a consequence in my opinion. Amen? <laughs> but you see, uh, Moses, in his frustration... He was disappointed with what Israel was doing. So God changed his path. Amen. As with Joseph, God was always with Moses. Amen. Moses used the leadership God blessed him with to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. And even in the face of adversity, when Israel rebelled, Moses continued to lead as God appointed him. Amen. And Moses' leadership included... Moses' leadership included praying for Israel when God was ready to unleash his wrath on them. Moses' steps were ordered by the Lord. And I love the definition of that word again. God was stabilizing. God was establishing. God was making him stable. God was giving him security. And God was giving him endurance. God is ordering your footsteps today. God's ordering my footsteps today. Even though our paths uh, may take different turns, we may, may, we may go to the left or the right, we're going to have interruptions, but we need to turn aside and see this great thing that God is doing. You know, I believe this. I believe that on our last day of earth, just before we take our last breath, God's going to let us look to the side and see all that He brought us through. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why we're going to go to heaven rejoicing. Amen. Well, Thank you, God. I see what you did all that time now. Amen. And I couldn't understand it back then. I didn't, I didn't understand all those interruptions, but thank God now I do now. And heaven's going to be sweet. Amen. Somebody else had an interruption in their life. His name was the Apostle Paul. <laughs> when we first meet Paul, he's in chapter 8 of the, of the book of Acts, and he is consenting to the massacre of the first deacon of the church, Stephen. He hated Christians, and he was on his way to persecute more. But on his path of life, he got interrupted one day by the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus showed up in his life, and Saul became the Apostle Paul. He was a murderer whose life, uh, whose life changed dramatically. And after it changed dramatically, he wrote 13 of the 27 books of the New Testament. And you can make up 14 books if you include the book of Hebrews, whose author is not listed, but I still think it as Paul. Amen. That's more than half of the New Testament that Paul wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. As Paul uh, is on his new journey, his path began to change several times. He was trying, as he was trying to evangelize, the Bible said he was attacked by the Grecians. They wanted to kill him. On his path of life, he was interrupted five times when he received from the Jews 39 lashes. The path in, in life took a hard left when he suffered imprisonment. Amen. You know what? Sometimes I'll go up to the Newcastle, the Newcastle, the Newcastle <laughs> Correctional Facility to see an inmate up there. And I, I tell you, when I'm sitting in that waiting room and I see other inmates come out for their visitations, I see a lot of lives that's been interrupted. Yeah. Amen. And I went up to Pendleton, and that's not a good place to go up there. And I saw some hardened people up there 
and their lives being interrupted. And you know what happens when their lives are interrupted? The, the, the visitor that comes to see them, their lives got interrupted too. Amen? Amen? But you know what? Sometimes life takes some pretty hard turns and people wind up in prison. In 2 Corinthians, Paul said three times he was beaten, three times with rods. He was stoned once, three times he was shipwrecked, he was in perils of robbers, and even he mentions in the perils of false brethren. You know, the body hurts sometimes with great pain when physical harm comes about, but the heart is broken with false brothers. Amen? I want you to know that when Paul was shipwrecked once, the Bible said this. He was bitten by a snake. And the Bible said that he should have died in minutes, but the Bible said he shook it off his hand. And the bottom line is, is that Paul lived through that and the people standing by, they had never seen this happen before. Now listen to me. Sometimes Christians get shipwrecked in life. Amen? Yeah. Nothing's perfect after you get saved. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I shared this with my wife last night talking about, uh, well, <clears throat> uh, I was talking about, uh, uh, talking about somebody, I guess. I'll just fess up. <laughs> Uh, and uh, but uh, I was advised by an, uh, an old time evangelist, Brother Clarence Doyle, one time, and he was trying to encourage me because I was complaining. I was a young pastor. I was trying to start a church out there in Coatesville, and uh, wasn't getting a, a lot of people coming, you know. And I was working hard, knocking on doors, doing all the right stuff, and uh, <laughs> trying to get people to come. And he was trying to encourage me. And he said, uh, "Brother Tim," he said, "I'm going to tell you something right now." He said, "If people were lazy before they got saved, they're going to be lazy after they get saved." If people were poor with their finances before they got saved, they're going to be poor with their finances after they get saved. See, a lot of things just don't change, do they? The main thing that changes is, is you are a brand new person inside. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Jesus Christ lives in you. But sometimes we still have our old ways about us, don't we? <laughs> Amen. Sometimes our lives get shipwrecked. Sometimes we get off the right path, don't we? We go another direction. Sometimes we follow the wind, and the wind takes us in places that we don't want to go. The path changes. You can see the dynamic of the road takes on a different form. The pavement is rough one day, and it's slick the next day. Then it turns fast, and it turns often. The sails will not withstand the winds of change, and they'll tear the sails away. Some days the ship you're in crashes against the rocks. Then the accuser comes. That's his name. The accuser comes, that old serpent who was in the garden, and he's hiding in a bush pile, and he strikes out at you, and he sinks his venomous teeth of accusation at you, and he reminds you of all that you've done wrong. Amen? Yeah. He has enough venom of your past mistakes injecting that into your mind that if you're not careful and you listen to him too long, you're going to start falling for it and believing it yourself. But I want you to listen to something. Give that old snake a spiritual shaking away from you. He has venom, but you've been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, and you're cleansed from all unrighteousness. Amen? You've been made perfect by your Father in heaven. You might say like Paul said, I'm persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed. The Christian might get bitten, but he will not die because of the power of the resurrected Jesus Christ living his life in and through you. Amen? Paul's path had, uh, had been altered many times, but he continued the journey. And he's not the only apostle this happened to. All of their paths had interruptions in them as they evangelized the known world of their day. And finally, your path may change soon. My path may change very soon. When you leave here today, or you conclude watching this on video, it could be that your path is going to change this afternoon or maybe tomorrow morning. I hope for the born-again believers who are listening here today, you're watching by video, I want to encourage you, and I hope you've been encouraged by these Bible characters I've talked about. They went through a lot of interruptions in their life, but yet God was with them. And you know what? They each, every one, every single one of them ended up just fine. They all went to heaven. Amen. Some were beaten up. Some were bruised. Some were brokenhearted before they got there, but they got there. <laughs> This past week, Brother Ray shared a thought with Mike and I, and I asked him for his permission. I'd like to share it with you this morning, and uh, maybe I'm just going to touch on it, and maybe he'll expound on it on his uh, next message. I don't know. But I want you to remember what I said about, uh, about Joseph. He, he, had, uh, he had been accused of a crime, but he was innocent. 
And he was thrown down into the dungeon, but he was innocent. His brothers hated him because of his favor, but he was innocent. Amen. Amen. You know what? Uh, I want you to leave here today, born-again believer. If you're saved, I want you to leave here today understanding that as a born-again, saved child of God, that you are righteous, or you can say that you've been made innocent yeah. by the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yeah. His blood has cleansed you and made you clean and righteous and innocent. Amen. That's what that word righteous means. It has the definition of being innocent. Isn't that sweet to know? I mean, glory to God, we ought to be smiling. Don't look at Brother Tim like, I don't think you're right about that. I don't have to be right about it. The Bible's right about it. Amen? I'm just conveying to you what I've learned. And thank you, brother, for that. That was a good thought, man. And, and I asked him, I said, I'd like to share that today. It fits right in with Joseph. Amen? Joseph was innocent. I think that's a beautiful picture of uh, righteousness and being innocent. Amen? So when your path changes, listen to me, when your path changes, because it's going to change. If you live to see tomorrow, your path is going to change. Amen? Amen? When those interruptions in life occur, I want you to leave here today not having any thoughts that God's whipping up on you or trying to settle up on some old sins that you haven't confessed. Amen? Because yeah. that's just not the case. Uh, God's not getting even with you. God don't get even with people. God doesn't get even with people. All of your punishment, listen to me, friend, all of your punishment was taken out on the body of Jesus, and now there's no more punishment left for you or me. There's no punishment left for us. It was taken out on Jesus. Amen? So the paths will change. The interruptions will happen, but you're going to be okay through it all. And I want you to leave here with that. And uh, I don't know what you're going to go through I don't know what I'm going to go through. Uh, you know what? Um, I'm 65 years old. Got a birthday coming up. Another year. Another trip around the sun. Amen? And uh, I can tell you this. I don't feel like I did 10 years ago. You don't either. I don't look, I don't look like what I did 10 years ago. I got way better looking. And, uh, <laughs> Amen? Amen? But you get what I'm saying. Our lives have changed. Our lives are filled with interruptions. Interruptions. And here's the good thing about interruptions. They give us experience. They teach us. They educate us. They help us to start thinking maybe the next time a situation comes up, maybe I shouldn't go down that path again. Amen? And, uh, and one of these days as I continue... To get older and live another day, another hour, another year, I'm going to finish up good. I'm going to finish up good. I'm going to go to heaven with all of my interruptions. Now, let me tell you this. Sometimes your interruptions may even be, I don't even want to go to church again. Because so many things that I've seen and I don't like. And it's just not right. And there's abuse. And hey, I'm talking about in the house of God. I'm talking about with Christian people. Amen? Yeah. Sorry. It's just the truth. Sorry, it's just the truth. <laughs> and uh, sometimes your life gets interrupted. Or maybe you don't show up for a while. But during that time when that path has changed in life, God is busy. And during that time, this is my encouragement to you, Look aside and see this burning bush that's not consumed. And go see what God has got in store for you. Amen? Amen. 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 Come on up, musicians. Joseph went to heaven. Moses went to heaven. Paul went to heaven. Every born-again believer is going to go to heaven even when the path changes and life is interrupted. So I would ask you today, if you're here in this audience and you're, or you're listening by video and you've never been saved... I want you to know that you can be saved today. And I, I want to tell you something. If you've never been saved and you feel a pounding in your heart today, it could be that God's speaking to you and God may be wanting to interrupt your life right now and change your path. And I guarantee you it will be the best interruption that you've ever experienced in your whole life. Let's bow our hearts this morning as we prepare to sing. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for interrupting my life one day. Thank you for changing my path. And God, I don't know who I'm speaking here to today. There might be a path changing in the next hour. It could be tomorrow. 
It may already have changed before people got here this morning. Maybe somebody listening by video, uh, their path changed suddenly and now they're looking for an answer. And maybe they have begun listening. And Father, if somebody needs to be saved, I pray that right now they would realize that you want to change their life. You want to change their path and give them a place in heaven for all eternity. And maybe they don't know how to pray. So Father, help them right now to believe upon the Lord Jesus. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I would just like to lead you in a prayer right now if you don't know how to pray. Dear God, I believe that Jesus is your son. And I believe that he died for me on the cross. I believe that when he was buried, that he rose from the dead by the power of God. And God, right now, I ask you to save me. If you'll pray a simple prayer like that and believe it in your heart, meaning it in your heart. God will hear that prayer and He'll save you right now, dear friend. Maybe your life is changing. Your path is going in a different direction. God's trying to get your attention. Look aside and see this bush that's on fire that's not consumed and hear what God has to say for you today. Father, I pray that you'll bless in this time now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Brother Ray, what... Thank you.